All right, guys. So this is a very long video. This is my longest video on this channel ever. And I wanted to let you know that this entire video is built to help you through the end game. And I don't want to waste your time, but there is no quick way of explaining all this information. So please try to watch the video through the entire video through the end. It is very helpful. It took me many hours to compile the information for this. So just know that this is a very informative video for you using your resin and Mora appropriately on characters and will give you the most value for your account. This is one of the most difficult sets of information I've ever had to compile. So again, I don't want to waste your time. This is the quickest way I could explain it. When you're farming artifacts, there are the, there are some fee, key features you have to look out for. And when you're farming any artifact in Genshin Impact, you go for a few stats. The primary stats that everyone in the entire game goes for is crit chance and crit damage. If you're looking to maximize any character and you really want to feel powerful on that character, you want a minimum of 40% crit chance on that character and 100% crit damage. After that point, it's really going to depend on if the character has a main stat or an artifact stat that is going to be going toward crit chance or crit damage. And if you are looking to maximize your character, you probably want to end up at least 50% crit chance and 150 crit damage to really start feeling some big differences on your character. That's where you probably want to end up. Now, if you're going for a super late game and you're trying to get beyond that and going to the realm of kind of max minning for efficiency, this video is going to go over the best max min strategy is for artifacts, for efficiency, for both your moral wits, resin, etc. So that you know exactly what the value is of using your resin for artifacts is up to a certain point. If you are a player that plays the game every single day and doesn't do errors and refreshes, you fall into the category of let's just call you guys the 99% people of the game. 99% of players do not spend money on resin refreshes. If you spend money on resin refreshes, most likely you're spending hundreds of dollars a month, which a maximum of $300 per month that you could potentially spend on Genshin Impact in the US, and that's what you would be any of it. Now on my accounts, I typically only do resin refreshes on one account, but on the account you're seeing right now, this is actually an entirely free to play account besides Battle Pass and Welkin. I actually only spend money on the Battle Pass on this account and the Welkin Moon, which cost me a total of about $15 every month or so, probably a little less than that, like 12 or something like that if you want to, or 10, I don't know, is it 12? I think it's like 12, average is like 12. Anyways, it's very, very minimal on the amount of expenditure that you have to spend to get what you need to go, but most players don't spend money on resin refreshes. And because of that, we're gonna be talking about um, artifact XP or Mora and the value of each character's artifacts and where you should really be stopping to not spend too much time on artifacts. Now, what I did to discover where artifacts have a great stopping point at is really, really simple as far as the rules go. But as far as like, how far you want to go, take that as far as you want. If you want to spend all your resin infinitely on certain characters, have fun, enjoy maxing those characters to the fullest. If you very much enjoy doing so, have a great time. However, if you're looking to maximize a lot of different characters and keep pulling in for different characters, this guy is for helping people that are looking to play a lot of different characters and feel very powerful while doing that. So I'm going to help you guys with those things. So whenever you're looking at any artifact piece, there are two different kinds of artifacts. There's going to be the flower and the plume which are going to be the substat whores and we're going to be on the other side which is going to be the main stat whore pieces which are going to be the headpiece the goblet as well as the sands now all three of these are much more difficult to get very high rolls on because you have to first get the correct main stat and second you have to get the correct substats on on, on top of that so if you wanted to maximize any of your artifacts on your characters you really got to focus on getting a certain amount of rolls on those artifact pieces and by rolls i mean by whenever you level a character artifact you get of course um a specific substat roll on one of these four or three different things that you have what I mean by that is that most of the artifacts you get for headpieces are probably going to roll one to three times on the headpiece roll on the crit chance or crit, uh, on the crit chance roll that you could potentially have and the reason for that is because whenever you're rolling an artifact for a headpiece, 
a, a headpiece, you actually have a significantly lower chance to roll what you really need for your character for damage than any other piece. Headpieces are actually the hardest possible piece in the entire game to get the perfect artifacts. And the reason they're the hardest in the entire game is because the main stat that you're gonna be rolling on your headpiece is gonna be crit chance or crit damage. Now, because of that, you're of course only gonna have one of the two on the side of that. You're gonna have crit chance or crit damage on the substat. Now, because that's the case, you're also going to have to roll really heavily on the crit chance or crit damage subset on top of that. So you have a ton of different RNG factors that are playing against you here. Because all that's coming into play and you have all this other stuff. What I did was I did a lot of math based upon this idea on the amount of artifact rolls that you're going to need in order to get this done. Now, conversely, on the other side of things, we have plumes and plumes, of course, do not have to roll this main stat. Every single plume in the entire game you get is always gonna have flat attack on the main stat and will have a variance factor on all the substats. It's gonna have crit chance, crit damage, energy recharge, HP, can have everything but flat attack. So, because you can get all those other things, what you really want is a primary amount of your substats on the crit chance and crit damage on your plume as well as on your flower. Now, if this is new information for you guys and you have not heard this before, it's because I haven't really talked about this substantially, but this is where I tell people about artifacts. Now, I, I want to show you these two pieces. Now, this piece right here is a, a piece with 9.3% crit chance as attack percentage, elemental mastery, and attack. This is a very bad artifact. Not very bad, just like just a bad artifact. The reason this is a bad artifact is because I only have two crit chance rolls on my actual artifact. The other roll I actually got was on the flat attack here and I got two other rolls on elemental mastery. So of the five rolls, I, they're kind of distributed this way. So I'm not getting what I really need out of this artifact. I actually am getting a significant amount less of what I actually need, which is the crit chance and crit damage substats. Because I'm keeping this flower right now, I haven't farmed to get another one, but this is just a perfect example of what a not good artifact is in game. If you're between AR35 and AR55, this is a great artifact. If you're AR55 and up, this is actually a very bad artifact. If you're looking to progress in the game and Genshin Impact and have good artifacts on your characters, the minimum amount of rolls that you would like to have on a flower or plume is going to be three rolls on crit chance or crit damage. You want a total of those amount of rolls. This is only two and you want a minimum of three to really see power on your characters so that you can actually delineate your stats over different parts. So the rule of thumb, as I mentioned, is going to be a on the plume or the flower, you want at least three artifact rolls to have a good stopping point and feel that you are extremely powerful in those characters. Now, of course, if you're going to be using this on like a four star character or whatever, like, and using this as sub DPS characters and do this over time, this is going to be different for other characters. So for example, my Zhang Ling right now is using a one roll artifact on her noble asset. I'm not really working toward my Zhang Ling right now, and I'm not done with her at this point. It's passable and fine. So as I mentioned, if you're between AR, uh, AR35 and AR55, this is fine. It's okay. You can keep it full copium, but don't worry. You'll be okay. But once you hit AR55, that's when you start max minning and start changing your artifacts around to get better artifacts. For example, this artifact right here has two rolls on it for crit chance and crit damage. I've had it for a significant amount of time, but you know what? I don't have time to roll every single artifact on every single character when I only have 180 resin a day. So I have to be efficient with my resin and use it in the right way. So the other pieces that we're going to talk about are going to be both uh, and now that we've kind of talked about plumes and got plumes and flowers for the good stopping points for those we're going to be talking about the other two artifacts which are the bigger artifacts that i'm going to talk about which are going to be goblets as well as uh sands now goblets and sands 
are a whole different enigma. You have to roll onto the sands for the attack percentage, HP percentage, defense percentage, whatever you may need on the main stat. And you also have to get the crit chance and crit damage on the substats. Now, this is actually a lot harder than a lot of other pieces. And I find the sands to be one of the most difficult pieces to obtain in the entire game to get it on the correct set bonus. And as you can see here, I spent a significant amount of time in the witch domain. I actually have four artifacts that are witch artifacts for, for these. And I ended up getting a lot of other artifacts in the game, but I don't have a ton of like attack percentage sands that have exactly what I want besides this Thunder Soother piece, which is like amazing. And but what's really interesting is the rule of thumb that I give people is you want to start off no matter what with a minimum of two artifact rolls on sands and goblets, and you want a minimum of three on plumes and flowers. And the reason you want a minimum of three on plumes and flowers is because you don't have to roll the main set, but on the goblets and the sands, you want a minimum of two. And the reason you want a minimum of two is because everything past that point is extremely good. It's so good, you'll be super happy. But every piece that you have that has a minimum of two artifact rolls on crit chance or crit damage for your sands and goblet, you should almost always keep. And if you get one roll on your headpiece on crit chance, it's okay, but you're probably going to have to deal with it. Two rolls, it's insane. But I would probably keep at minimum one roll on crit... If it rolls one time on crit chance or crit damage, that's the minimum I would keep for a headpiece that is going to be a good headpiece. Now, I know a lot of you, if you're pre-AR55, you're in a situation like your artifact is a crit damage artifact you've been grinding it for a week and you're like damn i finally got a crit damage headpiece and look it has four stats on it and i'm happy so now i can go in on this artifact because it's the right set bonus yeah okay if you're that guy that's fine yeah what we're trying to help you with if you're that guy is when you should take that piece and feed it into the next piece that you do get while farming that artifact domain and trying to improve it. Okay? So don't feel bad. If you get your main set roll on set, that's good. You're in a good spot. Now to upgrade that piece, you should do this to upgrade it to this piece. But when should you stop? That's the real question. And that's what we're answering in this video. So if you're before that, you're not there yet, again, you're here. You're not here where you're going for that substat. You're on the right track. So when looking into Genshin Impact, I needed to figure out how much more it costs to max everything. And the reason this is important and relates to artifacts very heavily is because of the artifact XP re-rolling thing that we've talked about just now. When you're looking for perfect artifacts or better artifacts, you need to know how many resources you're spending in order to get that artifact improved. Now, improving your artifacts actually only improves your character up to a certain point. And at that point, doing all the other things for your character are better than doing better artifacts. Trust me here. This is the math proving that. Okay. Again, I'll say it again for you. There is a point where farming artifacts is less efficient for your account and less efficient for your characters than doing the other things like leveling your characters and leveling your talents. I have just described to you what I the stopping point on any character when leveling artifacts. When you should level your artifacts up to your plume to level uh, to three rolls or so, and you should get your goblet up to two rolls, and if you get your headpiece to two, it's great. So based on that, on this spreadsheet that I've created right here, an artifact for a goblet at C tier is where you want to be. Two artifact rolls. A C tier goblet and a C tier sands is where you want to be. Two artifact rolls on crit chance or crit damage. You're good to go. You can move on to the next character. You don't need to keep working on this character. They're in a good spot. When you're talking about your plume and your flower, you want a B tier artifact and you want to make sure that they are going to have at least three rolls. There you go. There's your stopping points. That's when you should stop farming artifacts in these characters. And this is the, the hypothesis that we're going to be talking about today and why I'm talking about these things. Where's the where's the typo? Goblet? Oh, globlet. I'm, I'm a genius. Did you max your globlet first? 
Okay. Now for characters, most players are going to be stopping their supporting characters early on at like the C tier, where they're going to be stopping at 60 out of 70 on level six talents across the board. Until you get to AR, say 50 plus or something like that, or 60, uh, sorry, not 60, AR 50 plus, probably AR 53 or four, you're probably going to be have like C tier support. So you're just going to have them at 666 talents and stay there, right? Once you get to AR 55, you probably want to have at least B tier supports and try to get them to 888 talents. Try to get there around that point little, between AR 55 and 56. By AR 56, you should be trying to get your supports to A tier and get to the point where you're all on the talents you can kind of stay in the b tier but uh and your supports you kind of want to stay and get to the a tier by ar56 as a free-to-play player okay that's where you want to go uh your main dps you always want them to be fucking s tier who cares dude s tier all the way on your main dps try to get s tier everything on whatever character but your supports are different right okay your main character that you play all the time that's your husband or waifu or whatever character you want s tier everything obviously now the total. Now the reason I want to go over these kit, the, these parts of the kit, and talk about these things is because when you're looking at the total amount of Mora cost it costs for talents and everything else, there is a breakpoint where talents and level ups become more efficient for your account than leveling up artifacts, and you actually get more out of the Mora that you've spent on your talents and level ups than your artifacts, and that point is actually at these talent uh, at these b and c tier artifacts that i have labeled out at this point the reason these are stopping points and the reason i'm giving you this as a stopping point is because past that point you're actually going to get more out of your mora by spending it on level upgrades and talents because the chance of you getting those artifacts upgraded after that point for those characters is super fucking low. Like you would be surprised how low it is. To level a character to 90, it's gonna take you about 2 million Mora. To get all their talents to level eight, it's gonna take you 1.5 million Mora. And to get to all their talents to level nine, it's gonna take you 2.8 million Mora. Now remember these numbers. Talent level 10 on S tier and everything like that. That's that's a whole crown and everything else. Obviously, that's no, probably not gonna happen because you don't have crowns. But getting your talents to a higher level is very different. Now we're leveling five star weapons or four star weapons. I recommend every player in the game to level all your weapons to level 90. There's never a situation where you shouldn't do that. Between AR 45 and AR 55, AR 35 plus, get them as high as you can get them, whatever you can do. I'd say like between C tier and A tier, uh, C tier and A tier if you can for your support somewhere in that range, depending on where you are between 35 and 55. And once you, by, you hit, by the time you hit 55, all your support should be level 90 weapons, okay? That's the primary focus on your supports by AR-55 you want to be at, try to get all your weapons to level 90. It is extremely important, okay? It affects all the rest of your stats and everything. It's super, super helpful, trust me here. Now we're getting into the meat and potatoes of Artifact Rain, and the reason I want to talk about this. What I did was I went out and I found out what the chances are on each artifact piece. There are many different types of artifacts in the game that you can get. And because there's so many different types of artifacts that you can get, what I found out was the exact artifact probability of rolling each type of artifact the way you want them based on the type of artifact that exists. So for this first column here, I'll show you what that means. If you get an artifact that looks like this, where you have one crit damage roll on it, it falls into this first column. It only has three artifact rolls here, and it falls into this first column here. If you end up getting an artifact piece with two crit damage rolls on it, but it only has three rolls, it falls into the second column here. If you end up getting an artifact piece with four artifact rolls starting with it, and it has one crit damage rolls, it falls in the third column. And finally, if it ends up looking like this and you're like, damn, bro, it falls into this juicy fourth column. So to get a C tier artifact, if you wanted to re-roll any artifact to get two crit damage rolls 
on your artifact, to our C tier artifact, to take this artifact and roll on crit damage, there is a 26% chance that you're going to get two or more crit damage rolls on this artifact for crit damage. However, conversely, if we're looking at a piece that starts with four rolls and you get an extra roll, you actually jump all the way up to a 37% chance. So if you start with four rolls on your artifact, instead of three, there is a 37% chance for you to roll two or more chance times on crit damage versus the 26 you had before. For those of you who are big on math, I didn't use binomial probability. I used classic probability with at least probability variations, and I didn't actually use the exact probability. I used an at least probability simulation so people could actually get the real inference. But everyone else, yes, it's right. Now, however, what's really cool is that if you start a artifact piece with two crit rolls, and you're looking at, let's say, we start on this artifact piece right here, right? The ch if you start with an artifact with three rolls on it, and it has both crit chance and crit damage, there is a 69% chance for you to get at least two rolls on crit chance or crit damage. There's a 31% chance that you get three rolls or better. So one in three, it's a God piece and it's a B tier piece and you're happy, okay? A 31% chance for this to roll better on this artifact. Sus. Yeah, that's, that's a lie, Seca. I didn't get those things. It didn't happen the way you said it did, Sekka. Sekka, I didn't get any crit damage rolls. This is trash, Sekka. I don't believe you. This is bullshit. I'm out! But to get the maximum possible rolls, there's only a 6% chance. So if you roll one roll on HP, defense, or whatever, and the other three are on crit chance of crit damage, you're in a super happy position, okay? It's very, very good. However, if you luck out, I freaked out the other day because I got an artifact piece that had a, it was a four roll artifact with crit chance and crit damage. The other two rolls don't matter, by the way. If you end up getting any artifact, it doesn't matter. If these are both flat HP and flat defense, it doesn't fucking matter. Okay? It doesn't matter if this is flat HP and flat defense, defense percentage, HP percentage, it doesn't fucking matter. If you end up getting any piece in the entire game that has four artifact rolls and the correct main stat that you need with crit chance and crit damage there is an 81 percent chance that you roll at least twice on crit chance and crit damage a 50 50 shot at you rolling at least three an 18.75 percent chance of you rolling four times and three percent on other ones there's an 81 percent chance i roll well on this all right Seka, let's see how good your math is Seka, you're trash. 81% fucking lies. Seka, you straight lied to me. 81%? I'm out, Seka. This is trash. 81% my ass. Ah, this always happens to me on every artifact. Seka, this game is fucking trash. You lied. You lied, Seka. You lied. You lied. The reason I wanted to go over this and the reason I wanted to talk about Mora first, and Mora is so important, is because I wanted to figure out the exact amount of Mora it would cost going for certain artifacts at different thresholds. So, what I did was I did that math. I did it. I did the Mora math based on artifacts and the chances of you getting those artifacts. Okay? I did the Mora math on artifacts. No one's ever done this ever. Here's the real math that sucks, okay? And I hated seeing this. If you start any artifact and you're trying to improve an artifact and, you need, and you're starting at this point right here and you're trying to get four rolls on this artifact on crit jam is, it's only a 0.39% chance of happening, but it's gonna take you 14.8 million Mora for you to roll that 
every single fucking time you get one. If you wanted to roll on a three roll artifact with one crit chance or crit damage substat, because that's how much more it costs. It takes you a total of 3,000 Mora to feed a level 18 piece or a level 20 piece to a level 20 piece. But on top of that, you also then have to feed up the additional amount that's missing, which is another 57,845 Mora or 57,000 XP because you lost 20% XP. All those added together, if you never got a 2x roll at all, would take you 14.8 million fucking Mora. So if you're trying to take this piece and roll four times on crit damage, stop. It ain't fucking happening. If you get three, pop champ, you're done. <laughs> That's why you stop at three. That's why three on the plume and flower. Good to go. However, because you have to roll the main stat and the substats on your artifact goblets, sands, and headpieces, you want a way fucking higher chance. So 26%, that's why you stop it too. To save your ass, Mora, you're welcome. <laughs> However, if you're lucking out and if you got an artifact that has both crit chance and crit damage on a three roll artifact like this. And you wanna take a chance on this artifact to try to get four rolls on it or three rolls on, it on crit chance or crit damage. The only, the, the amount of Mora that you're actually gonna spend is about a million Mora of pieces just like that. Pieces that look like this in order to get yourself a four roll artifact. Now, this is not the best artifact in the entire game, but it is a very godly piece to get a four roll artifact. And the fact that it takes a million more to get to this point is really interesting because most free to play players are not willing to spend a million Mora per artifact to get it four rolls. That's why I recommend stopping in the B tier and the C tier for your artifacts, because as you can see for the, the total amount of Mora cost, it's somewhere between 115 to 175,000 Mora, which is significantly more affordable in artifact rerolling if you're gonna be rolling that. So what I recommend for players that are going for these kinds of artifact rolls is the last column here, which is gonna be this one right here. This is the perfect artifact that I would find anywhere. If you end up seeing a perfect main stat and it has one crit chance and no crit damage roll on it or one crit damage roll and no crit chance roll on it, that's a really good artifact. And the reason that's a really good artifact is because you have a significantly higher amount of chance to go for these perfect rolls. And as you can see, the amount of artifact XP that it's gonna take is that you, it takes about 3.7 million Mora to go for an A tier artifact. And if you wanted to, these B tier artifacts, which are also really good to get your three rolls on, super nice. But what's most important is this one here, the C tier artifact. Since you're going for C tier artifacts anyways, you actually have a really high chance if you're going for a crit chance goblet or crit chance sands or headpiece to get those two rolls if you start with four rolls on your artifact. It's a super high chance to get this artifact. So if you want an artifact that looks like the sands on Kaching where you have 21% crit damage, there's actually a 37% chance if you start with four artifact rolls for you to get this artifact just like this and that's a very high chance and it actually costs you only 170,000 mora in re-rolling artifacts of this type so just know that any artifact that you get like that is going to be very efficient for your total amount of mora and is great but past that point you really only want to take artifacts that are perfect starting points so if you want to go beyond b tier artifacts my personal recommendation is only do that if you start with crit chance and crit damage on a four roll or three roll artifact. Don't even try to improve a piece that is going to be for 
a lower caliber piece. Otherwise, you're going to be spending millions upon millions of Mora to get those pieces upgraded. Now, what I mentioned was the stopping point earlier on is B tier and C tier artifacts for most of your characters, the vast majority. The reason you want to stop at B and C tier is because when you go past that point, look at the overall Mora cost that you're going to have per artifact piece versus what you would be spending on talents and level ups for your characters. There is a break point where talents, and this is three separate talents for a character, like leveling up a talent, all the talents on a character, not just one, but all of the talents. There's a break point where the talents become so much better than artifacts that you really need to switch back to talents and focus on your talents instead of grinding artifacts. And at that point, it is B and C tier artifacts. Once your talents are upgraded on your supporting characters and your main DPS characters, then go back to artifact grinding and start working on your characters. All right, now here's the best part. You have to do five of these. Each one of these is one artifact and each character needs five artifacts. So multiply these numbers times five per character. At a certain point, you realize this is way cheaper. It's actually way cheaper to go for talents and upgrade your characters to max level because you have to multiply all these numbers times five. The total amount of cost that you're gonna have is really interesting. If we leveled every single character in the game to 90, what's really interesting is the total amount of Mora it would cost to level every single character in the entire game to level 90 is only 62 million Mora. And that's the cheapest cost you can do. And I said that correctly. To level every single character in the entire game to level 90, it's 62 million Mora. And that's the lowest cost. <laughs> okay, to level every talent in the entire game to level nine, not the highest level, it's 85 million Mora. <laughs> level 10, don't even get me started. Just double that. It's like, it just, it's basically double that. <laughs> All right, it's like 156 million more or some shit like that. It's insane, okay? However, weapons, cheap as fuck. You only need like 30 of those, right? So you need 30 weapons. Let's say they're all five stars. Uh, if you did 30 weapons and they're all five star weapons, right? Uh, that's actually cheap as fuck. So weapons are hella cheap, bro. Uh, if you didn't know, weapons are really fucking cheap. It's only 33 million more. It's actually hella cheap, bro. 33 million more to level up every all five star weapons to level 90. That's cheap as fuck. All right. Five star and all five star weapons, mind you. Not even four star. Four star is even cheaper. Okay. Uh, 33 million more. No big deal. So basically, uh, level all your weapons to 90 first. Level your characters, as I've mentioned in the video. And uh, artifacts stop earlier than you think if you wanted to level up every artifact in the game to a minimum of a tier artifact the minimum cost of you leveling any art like all the characters artifacts in the entire game the as i said the minimum cost is 46 million mora to get a tier artifacts the maximum cost is about 2 billion mora it costs you up to 2 billion Mora to uh, get A tier artifacts on all your characters. Yeah, somewhere between uh, 46 million to 2 billion Mora. It's, uh, you should probably go back and farm some talent books. God roll artifacts? Fuck that. <laughs> I'm out. And that's just Mora. I didn't even go over the other resin costs for artifact XP and everything else. Fuck that. <laughs> you don't need to farm that many artifact sets. You should probably stop a lot sooner than you think. I forgot a zero. My bad. All right, guys. Uh, if you made it to this point in the video, please subscribe to the channel. I make lots of content like this. I make uh, tons of guides, inferences all about this. I have degree in mathematics and I talk about this. So please like and subscribe. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you got a lot of information out of it. And if you do have some questions, uh, I live on Twitch every single day. You can ask me questions there. Of course, leave a comment in what you thought about the video in the comment section down below. Have a great rest of the day, guys. Peace.